What's going on, everybody? It's RoarYJ here, and welcome back to another episode of Sleeper Sunday. So, Sleeper Sunday, for those of you that don't know, is a series I came up with showcasing fun and hidden decks that you may not know about, but can deal quite a bit of damage in the right hands. We'll be going over a basic deck list, strengths, weaknesses, what can be done to make the deck better, and of course, a few replays to see the deck in action. In today's episode, we're going over this month's poll winner, Dogmatica. Now, I, I know what you may be thinking, Aurora, what do you want about Dogmatica has seen competitive success since its release? And, well, you'd be right about that, technically Dogmatica as an engine has been a staple in a good few decks such as Dogmatica Invoke Shadal, speaking of which, check out my Dogmatica Invoke branded Shadal deck list up in the annotation in the corner, I need to plug obviously. But the deck has never really seen relevance as a pure strategy, utilizing the deck in the way it was intended to with its ritual monsters. You may also be thinking, isn't Dogmatica still getting support, is this even allowed? Well it's my series and I'll do what I want. Dogmatica is an archetype of light spellcasters that debuted in the Rise of the Duelist back in 2020, kickstarting the Fallen of Albias storyline and continuing to receive support with its newest card being released in Power of the Elements. Their effects revolve around the extra deck, both on field and by dumping monsters from both, as a sort of extra deck control strategy, locking yourself out of your own extra deck to give you some really powerful effects. When played pure, it has a ritual focus playstyle with other main deck monsters to sort of back them up. Now I'm sure you've actually seen most of the cards we're going to be covering in this video, but there's probably a handful that you might not have even known existed. Starting off, of course, we have Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous, everybody's favorite crusader girl. She cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster someone from the extra deck, you can special alert if there's something from the extra deck on the field, and on summon, at the cost of using your extra deck for the rest of the turn, you can add any Dogmatica card from your deck to your hand. Which not only adds things like Flirtily and Maximus, like a lot of people have seen, or even uh, Dogmatica Punishment, but also the Ritual Monsters, and some of the spells as well. Flirtily is everyone's second favorite Dogmatica monster that allows her to special herself during the main phase if a monster from the extra deck is on the field, allowing you to also imperm a monster on the field if you control another Dogmatica monster, and allowing your Dogmatica monsters to gain 500 attack when one of them declares an attack. Maximus is another really popular one, however I know some people might not know exactly what Maximus does, it only sees play in uh, certain niche builds involving Dogmatica cards. It says you can banish any extra deck monster from your graveyard to special it from your hand, and during your main phase you can make both players send two monsters from their extra deck to the graveyard, and then you're locked out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Maximus is very important for this deck, being able to dump your vast majority of extra deck things that proc immediately or can proc later, plus you are going to want to thin out your opponent's extra deck as much as possible, it's sort of the entire end game and uh, win condition of this deck, it's just making sure you outgrind your opponent by like milling their entire extra deck if you can. A lot of people don't even know Dogmatica Nexus is a card, and honestly I don't blame them, it's kind of terrible. But we play it because it's a pseudo DD Crow. Because while it cannot be normal summoner set, it can be special summoned by banishing four um, extra deck monsters from either graveyard. And at the start of the damage step, if it battles a special summon monster, you can destroy all the opponent's attack position monsters and burn them for 800 for each uh, extra deck monster destroyed by this effect. So it's a pseudo Shadal construct in a way, or so, I'm sorry, El Shadal construct. We don't need any misconceptions there. But it is really hard to bring out, so we only play the one, though it isn't really something that you need to play. I just think it's kind of funny overall. But these are really the only main deck dogmaticas that aren't the rituals that are worth playing because you have like Ashion, which is a bit too specific and doesn't really do anything to advance your game state. Theo and Adin, we don't even talk about, so yeah. We do play the incantations, however, because keep in mind, not only are you ritual summoning, but you're not using your extra deck, and the incantations already fit perfectly within that restriction of locking you out of your extra deck. And so we have two Talismandra, two Candle, and then one of each of these. Obviously, Talismandra grabs a ritual monster from deck and Candle a spell. And then these two aren't really here for their effects, but more so in case you open them you can special one of the good ones they're not only really good at fetching the things you need but they're really good tribute fodder as well because you have a level six level four level three level five you can match just about any level that you really need plus they offer great tribute fodder in general for a card we'll be getting to in a second but now we have the dogmatica ritual monsters which yeah people still don't know that dogmatica has ritual monsters it's hilarious but first up, we have White Knight of Dogmatica. This is the first one they got, which says you can ritual summon it with Dogmatic Calamity, which was the only one at the time, but obviously you can summon it with the other one now because they have two. It says you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, and if your opponent activates a card or effect, except during the damage step, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, and if you do, look at your opponent's extra deck and send a monster from it to the graveyard, and this card gains attack equal to half the combined attack of those monsters sent until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect of White Knight of Dogmatica once per turn. It's actually a really strong effect, not just because it mills from your opponent's extra deck, but it also mills from yours, which can not only allow you to get follow-up in the form of something like Herald of the Arclight or Titanic Clad the Ash Dragon, 
but you can also send something like Elder Entity Natus to not only mill from your opponent's extra, but also be able to pop a card on the field. It is one of your better send effects, which doesn't say too much because it does only send one from your opponents, but because it can proc from literally anything your opponent activates, it is really strong. White Relic of Dogmatica, formerly White Exalted of Dogmatica, is their most recent ritual that came out in Battle of Chaos. It has the exact same stats as White Knight, except being a level 4 instead of a level 8, so it's half the level. And it says you can ritual it with Dogmatic Cobb, though you can also use Dogmatic Calamity, of course. And if it's ritual summoned, you can target two face-up monsters in the field and make one of them gain attack equal to the others. This effect is okay, uh, but mainly you're only going to have it on field uh, before you summon your White Knight. And even if you do have both, I mean, what, you're going to get one of them to a thousand. Ooh. But the real kicker is that not only does it say level 8 or higher Dogmatica monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle, which is actually a really good protection effect, people don't pay attention to that, but it says if a monster is special summoned from your opponent's extra deck, you can look at your opponent's extra and send one monster from it to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of White Relic of Dogmatica once per turn. So it arguably is a worse White Knight, but it does give that little bit of protection, which can be helpful because you will usually have both on field. I do wish it also protected from card effect, but I don't know, maybe Konami just didn't want it to be that okay. But yeah, so while White Relic is the arguably slightly worse one, it is a bit easier to summon because Dogmatic Calamity, which we will get to in a second, synergizes really well with it being a level 4. The last ritual we have is a copy of Chalice Lime. Chalice Lime is just a free extra incantation. There's really no need to like play if you don't want to. You could put anything else in here. I just think he's goofy. But now we get on to the real kicker. So of course the play style is centered around sending things from the extra decks to the graveyard. What if I told you you could send eight at once? So those of you that are familiar with Necroz, at least modern Necroz, might know about Zaborg the Mega Monarch. So Zaborg the Mega Monarch, we're going to ignore the first effect. It says if it's tribute summoned, you can target a monster in the field, destroy it, then if it was a light monster, both players send as many cards as possible from their extra deck to the graveyard, but not more than the original level or rank of that destroyed monster. And if it was tribute summoned by tributing a light monster, you get to choose the cards from your opponent's extra deck that are sent to the graveyard. What attribute are all of these? Guys, tell me, what attribute are all of these? So yes, one of your biggest win cons in the deck that is really funny to pull off and can win you games is tribute summoning Zaborg by tributing like incantations or Ecclesia or something, nuking himself in a kamikaze, and then milling eight from both extra decks, which keep in mind, not only thins your opponent's extra, but gets all of your extra deck things live immediately. You are literally sending over half of your extra deck. It's honestly kind of a ridiculous effect in my opinion, but it's from a different time, it's fine. We also have three copies of Ash and two copies of Imperm for our hand traps. I actually kind of added the Imperms like last second because I needed to remove some stuff to add some of the newer support. Um, but you can play it without it, honestly. For the back row, obviously we are playing two Nadir Servant. It is still semi-limited to two. Um, I just realized I have no ban list applied right now. I was wondering why it looked so weird. But yes, Nadir Servant is currently semi-limited to two, unfortunately, which did hinder the deck a little bit because this card is one of your best starters, if not the best starter in the deck. Being able to not only add from deck, but recycling, which is really important in this build because you are playing a lot more Dogmaticas, is really strong. But we also have the Ritual spell. So Dogmatic Calamity was the first one to come out. It came out with White Knight of Dogmatica, and it says, This card can be used to ritual summon any Dogmatica ritual monster. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field, whose total level is exactly equal to the level of the ritual monster you summon, or send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, whose level equals the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. But for the rest of the turn, you cannot summon from the extra deck, and you can only activate one Dogmatic Calamity per turn. So yes, they have a Necroz Kaleidoscope. I think almost word for word. It is a bit annoying that you have to send exactly the uh, equal level, and you can only send one from your extra instead of multiple otherwise white knight would just be too easy to bring out i guess being able to dump two arc lights but yes usually you're going to be starting by activating dogmatic calamity summoning your white relic sending your arc light and then using your arc light to add white knight or dogmatic cob which we will get to in a second i hope i'm saying this right because cobra sounds really weird yes dogmatic cob is the one that came out in battle of chaos with white relic and says it can also be used to ritual summon any dogmatic or ritual monster this time from your hand or graveyard mind you and it says you must also tribute monsters from your hand or field and or banish fusion or synchro monsters from your graveyard whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon then if both white knight of dogmatica and white relic of dogmatica are on the field you can look at either extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard and of course you can only activate one per turn 
So yes, they also have a Necroz Mirror, I believe, combined with Necroz Cycle. Of course, you are going to be using this as your last ritual spell that you activate just so you can get the double uh, summon effect and then get the mill, because otherwise it's just kind of not worth it. But it also is your best one for follow-up, and so usually if you get an extra Arclight dump for some reason, you're going to be adding Dogmatic Cobb instead of, you know, anything else. But these are the only two ritual spells that they have for now, one for each ritual monster, of course, and I think they're actually really solid overall. I, I like the Kaleidoscope effect. Kaleidoscope effects for ritual decks are always amazing for Arclight. And then being able to not only summon from hand or grave, but being able to banish stuff from graveyard means that you're almost always going to have this live because you're going to be milling a lot from the graveyard. We also have a copy of the new card, Branded Central Dogmatica, coming out in Power of the Elements, so it is not currently here in the TCG. That says if you special summon a ritual monster with a spell effect and no other monsters, you can look at either extra deck and send a monster from into the graveyard. And if you special a fusion monster with a spell effect, no other monsters, you can target that monster and double its attack basically, but it cannot attack except to attack an opponent's attack position monster. It can only use each effect once per turn. It is pretty slow overall, it's kind of just a win more card, you are going to be dumping another card, but it can be a life or death situation depending on it, because it is a every turn thing, it's just a continuous so you can uh, keep using it over and over. But to be fair, that does rely on you actually being able to survive that many turns. But I did want to mess around with it a little bit because it is searchable by Ecclesia, so I figured why the hell not. Let's have two copies of Pot of Prosperity. I was playing three, but I had to cut one for a second imperm because one imperm is really gross. Yeah, overall, it's fine. It really helps you dig for your uh, one-card things because usually you only need, like, an extra monster, an extra spell in order to go ahead and go into your ritual plays. And so, Prosperity, because you don't care about your extra deck, is just really solid. Called by, obviously, because we do love getting our stuff off. We also have two copies of Dogmatica Punishment. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what Punishment does. Dumping from the extra deck with equal or higher attack than a monster your opponent controls, and then popping that monster. And then you're locked out of the extra deck for two turns. Obviously really solid there. And we have one Dogmatic Aturgy, which is also relatively new. This, I believe, came out in Dimension Force. It says you ritual summon a Dogmatic or Ritual monster from your hand or deck by tributing Dogmatica monsters and or Ritual, Fusion, or Synchro monsters from your field, whose total levels exactly equal to the level of the monster you summon. Overall, pretty strong there, though unfortunately, Ritual Summoning from deck isn't that crazy when they don't do anything on summon. But it also says if it's in your graveyard, you can banish it and target two Dogmaticas with different levels in your grave, add one to your hand, and then place the other on the bottom of your deck. And you can only use one effect of Dogmatica Turgy per turn, and only once that turn. I really like Dogmatica Turgy. I do want to mess around with it a little bit more. I don't think I've actually resolved it yet, because I've never really had a hand where I open it, and I don't usually want to search it. I think it's a fine card, but I think they do need some more stuff that actually triggers on summon, rather than just these two. I don't know, that's just me though. And then obviously the two imprint that we covered earlier. Remember that the extra deck is completely irrelevant, because we are never going to be summoning anything from it ever. So we have three copies of Titanic Lad, three copies of Matus, three copies of Fossil Warrior Skull Knight, two copies of Fossil Machine Skull Wagon, three copies of Herald of the Arclight, and one copy of Cyframe Lord Omega because he is still limited, unfortunately. Of course, these are all targets that you can send or banish off of Prosperity. It really doesn't matter. This gets you access to all of your Dogmatica stuff, which is really nice. This gets you free pops. Remember, this is not a once per turn effect. This gets you free monster pops, though you, uh, it is a spell speed one. This gets you free back row pops at the same speed. This gets you access to all of your ritual stuff, which is probably why it's one of the best things in the extra aside from Titanic Lab. And then Omega is really nice re uh, recycling because you can continuously put it and things like Arclight back into the extra deck infinitely so that you can always have something live for like your ritual spells. It's similar to a Necroz extra deck currently, like uh, I'm pretty sure Necroz just has almost the exact same carbon copy extra deck. In fact, I think I actually copied this from my Necroz list, hold up. Literally the only difference is 3 Toad instead of 3 Titanic Cloud, yeah. So yeah, extra deck, really self-explanatory there. A thing you could consider playing is a small branded engine, obviously, branded Fusion, Albaz, uh, Lubellian, Albion, Mirage. You do have the space in the extra deck. It's not like the extra deck's tight. You can always cut things like Skull Wagon or extra copies of Skull Knight, things like that. Just remember to activate your branded fusion and stuff before you do all of your other plays. I think it actually probably would be better to play this instead of just playing this relatively pure build because this can bait hand traps, things like Ash, which can be really strong to stop your uh, Nadir Servant. Of course, you'd probably want to add some things to the main deck in order to actually make it worth it to use the branded fusion because one of the best parts about branded fusion is being able to dump. I don't know exactly all that you could add unless you want to play a small Shadal package for some reason off of like schism but if you've experimented with this kind of build actually before go ahead and tell me what you think would work because other than that you're going to be like summoning you know lubellian with an incantation or something so this is something i would like to experiment with someday just currently for this episode of sleeper sunday i will be showcasing the pure version but that is going to do it for the actual deck list I am going to go ahead and show you some replays. Heads up, a lot of them are actually opponents scooping. I don't really think there's any of them where I actually swing for game, but it, it becomes a point where, you know, your opponent realizes they can't outgrind you, or, you know, something comes up that they, you know, maybe they misplayed or something like that. 
I did miss playing one of these, by the way, if I do show it to you. I know I didn't set that imperm, leave me alone, but uh, without further ado, I will see you after the replays. Alright, so welcome back. I do hope you all enjoyed the replays, even though a lot of them were just scoop fests. People on EDO tend to not let you actually want to swing for game, which is hilarious. But with those out of the way, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the strengths of the deck. So overall, Ritual Dogmatica is fairly grindy against decks that require the extra to survive. As you can see against that Exorcist Sister player, I really just kept thinning out the extra deck over and over. They only played one Magnifica, I believe, and so getting rid of the Magnifica was super important for them. Basically anything that really needs, especially specific cards in the extra deck, and especially that are things that are like one ofs, or you know, maybe even two ofs, they're really going to have a hard time actually trying to outplay you if your boss monsters are stronger than their boss monsters. Another strength is that Zaborg, while I don't believe it came up in any of those replays, is kind of just an FTK against most decks. I do have some older replays um, of Ritual Dogmatica on the channel. If you do want to go check them out, I do have a few Zaborg replays in there. At one point, I actually milled my opponent's entire extra deck because he used a couple of them, and then I milled the rest, which was hilarious. Because I did actually play this deck on stream, by the way, you know, back when White Relic was, uh, just an afterthought in the OCG support land. Another strength is that the rituals are actually super easy to access. You have a bunch of different ways to add them and the ritual spells from deck to hand. You have your incantations, you have Ecclesia, you have Nadir Servant. Of course, you have Arclight being dump off of things. Nadir Servant is a one card ritual, by the way. You literally dump Arclight, grab one of these two, because keep in mind, Arclight has 600 attack. These both have 500 attack, which might be the reason why their attack is so low, but... Honestly, I feel like it could have been a little bit higher. But yes, you grab one of the monsters off the Nadir Servant, and then Arclight triggers grabbing you a Dogmatic Calamity. 
which can summon the white relic and then white relic um being on field triggering the arc light in graveyard you get to add another one of these basically you open a deer servant and then any ritual card and you get both rituals on board guaranteed and then of course it doesn't worry about its own extra deck at all and so it being milled by the opponent in some way d barriers scythe things like that they don't really phase the deck at all and then prosperity is completely free hell honestly you could play things like Extrav if you really want to. I just really like making sure I have my Arc Lights and my Titanic Lads. But yes, not caring about the extra deck is actually really good because it just does not care about anything like Scythe, D Barrier, anything that would lock them from it or would further hinder it. But let's talk about the weaknesses now. So the Ritual Monsters are pretty underwhelming on their own. Admittedly, White Knight is your best one out of the two and all it does is mill one from both. Maybe if it milled two, then it'd be more of a threat, like how Maximus does, but until then, it's really just not too crazy, because you're, you, a lot of people play multiples in their extra deck, right? And so unless you get like a really important key card or your opponent's playing only one of each thing, like, I don't know, maybe against Tri Brigade Lyra Lusk, you mill Recital Starling and then you mill Zeus or something. Overall, it's not going to be that great. Some decks, honestly, don't care about their extra deck being messed with. Again, decks that play multiples of their things or that don't even use their extra deck at all. Something like Flunder would absolutely stomp this deck. And I'm pretty sure I actually... Did I play against Flunder once? I don't know. But if I did, I know I'd probably get absolutely murdered because not only do they not care about their extra deck, their extra deck is full of things similar to mine that will allow them to curb stomp me if I try to Zaborg them. And while not using their extra deck is a pretty good thing, it's also very bad because it means they're unable to fall back on it at all if their main deck stuff gets stopped. That's probably why I think the branded package would be very welcome in the deck, other than obviously the Albast synergy. But overall, I feel like because they cannot rely on their extra deck a little bit, they do struggle in certain situations in which it would be helpful because their, the main deck can get stopped pretty easily, admittedly. But with that in mind, how do we make the deck better? So I think they need another ritual, preferably with better stats, by the way, because 500 by 2500 is not cutting it. One that can serve as more of an actual boss monster like Nexus does to make things like Dogmatic Aturgy more threatening. Because as it stands, Dogmatic Aturgy summoning from deck sounds really strong, but because these two are so underwhelming, it really doesn't matter, especially because you have to use like very little uh, payoff because you have to get rid of a lot of resources just to get out of White Knight just for a single send, you know? So yeah, something similar to Nexus in terms of its actual on-field effect, maybe a little bit better, obviously, because it is a ritual, you have to put more effort into summoning it, so that Dogmatic Aturgy, and honestly, both of these as well, can also be more threatening because you would be able to revive it, because Nexus really does not cut it as a boss monster, and the closest thing they have other than that is Fleur de Lis, which is okay, but it's no, like, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, you know? They need more extra deck hate aside from dumping, I think they need something like Necroz of Unicor, or just more interaction with extra deck things that are already on the field. Their closest thing is their field spell, because their field spell says, where is it, that neither player can target Dogmatica monsters you control with the effects of monsters that were summoned from the extra deck. After damage, Calc, if your Dogmatica monster battled an opponent's monster, you can destroy it. And then of course it says if it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect in the field zone, both players can mill one from your extra, but while this card is decent it doesn't do anything on its own and so it honestly ends up being more of a minus in your hand than it is a plus so yeah something similar to necros of unicorn or something that can just interact with things on field more other than like fleur de lis because the things that are already on the field aren't going to be affected by you milling and so you not only need to mill to prevent your opponent from accessing the important things but their fallback things that can usually out the things that out the important things are going to be able to go scot-free if you don't have an ability to stop them I think the deck needs cards that can help them grind a bit better, such as graveyard effects like Dogmatic Aturgy, because as it stands, unless the opponent really requires their extra deck, you're not going to be out grinding them too often because you lose resources really fast. This deck burns out a lot unless it can resolve something like Zaborg, because it's not going to have too many resources left after committing a lot of them to the ritual summoning, and then also, you know, using Fleur de Lis and Maximus and stuff, especially if they get stopped, you're really going to have a bad time. So yeah, it's just more things like Dogmatic Aturgy's graveyard effect, being able to recycle some stuff would be pretty appreciated. If the ritual spells had something like the Necrols ones did, I think it'd be beautiful, but unfortunately they do not. So maybe more things like that and the deck would be a little bit better in terms of the grind game. And finally, I think they need more ways to get board presence other than having extra deck things on board because Ecclesia? 
is really strong, but you'd rather normal summon Zabor, right? And so you and you can't special summon Ecclesia if you're not using your extra deck, which again is probably why the branded build would be a little bit better. But just some way to get your stuff on board a little bit more early without needing the extra deck monsters on board would be really nice because having an Ecclesia search on top of your already existing rituals is really nice for something like a punishment. But that is everything I do have to say about Dogmatica for Sleeper Sunday. I really like Pure Dogmatica. I actually played Pure Dogmatica before the rituals were even a concept back when it was first released and called Dragma, as you can see up here. It's still labeled Dragma. I always thought it was really fun, and I like extra deck hate decks because they're really funny, like Necroz. But overall, right now, Dogmatica just feels like a worse Necroz, and Necroz isn't even that great right now, so let that sink in if this is worse. I do want to practice with the branded engine, just a small package, you know, three branded fusion, two Albaz, and then one of each of these in the extra deck. Yes, we would be playing Albion, by the way, because you can set branded central Dogmatica, which I find funny. Maybe then the deck will see a little bit more success because you can access your things like Ecclesia more and have more of an end board threat, but until then, I don't think that the deck is too strong. It is still receiving support, I believe, after Power of the Elements. I don't think the storyline is over yet. So maybe you could receive, you know, another Ritual Monster. Just, just one more that's a bit of a boss monster that's better than Nexus. Just so things like Dogmatic Aturgy are more threatening. But until then, I don't know the fate of the deck. Hopefully it will get better. But for now, that's going to have to do it for the video. Tell me what you think about Ritual Dogmatica in the comments below. If you've played with the deck yourself before, I do play with this very frequently uh, for fun, especially test hands. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as I'll put this video and the channel into YouTube Recommended. And if you really liked it and you want to see more episodes like this, I have a bunch of Sleeper Sunday content up on my channel. And of course, there will be more to come. Then perhaps consider subscribing because we're on the way to 1,500 subscribers and it helps the channel more than anything else. Plus, it's absolutely free. But once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. It is Aurora, signing off.